in this presentation, we're going to look at the principles or systems analysis. Uh, we're going to see why um, businesses and organizations tend to um, use systems analysis within their organization. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is, what's, what is systems analysis? Okay. Systems analysis is the process of investigating a system, identifying problems, and using the information to recommend improvements to the system. Okay, so roughly systems analysis, cut it down, you study a current existing system, you understand and specify what the requirements are, and then you design a new system, or you just replace the existing system or parts of the existing system. So you've done a task, by now you should have done a task on um, the British Raj, which is a um, scenario where you looked at the problems of the current systems in British Raj, you worked in groups, three different groups that you worked in, and you came up with a alternative system for that British Raj. So this is one of the main reasons I got you guys to actually work in groups, do a systems analysis, see how, uh, have a hands-on experience of what systems analysis, analysis is, before actually going through the theory stuff. So everyone should have some experience of systems analysis now. So that's what it is. So this is exactly what you did. You did a systems analysis and design where you studied the current system, which is British Raj. You understood it and you specified what what the new system required. And then you obviously created a new system. Well, majority of you did. Okay. So like I've said, systems analysis is a process. Okay, we all did a process, so we did different. Uh, we all followed this um, process. We're going to go more into detail on the process that you uh, went through, but obviously you should already know the answers to this because we did it in your presentations in lesson. Okay, structure. Uh, it needs to have a structured and organized approach. Okay, it can't be done all over the place. You can't start with the implementation. You can't start by designing it. It has to be ordered in a structured way. And once again, we've experienced this. Okay, the requirements must be captured accurately. So you need to find out exactly what the new system or the improvements uh, that you require for when you analyze a system. Okay, the principles. One, key drivers. Second um, key principle is the development life cycle model. Once again, we've looked at this, but I will just recap over it once again um, throughout this presentation or throughout these online presentations okay and development tools and techniques okay some of this you may have covered slightly if you've been doing exactly what i've been telling you in your groups some of the, most of this will be covered already okay so let's look at the key drivers first what are the key drivers i mean what does it mean by key driver okay driver meaning makes you move forward what what's the reason for doing a systems analysis what's the point what's the reason creating a new system or adapting an existing one well mainly it's for business needs every organization every business needs to adapt needs to evolve so every so often you need to look at an existing system and see whether it could be improved or not okay it uh, an organization needs to grow okay a business needs to expand in new markets you can't have a shop and just stay in Chadwell Heath. You need to expand throughout London, throughout um, Barking and Dagenham, or throughout London, or UK. Okay, you need to expand. You can't expand by just having a computer system that only works in Chadwell Heath. You need one that can expand. You need to look at your existing system and see how it can work in different areas. Okay, this way, if a company grows, you get more work in more areas, you expand, you could, uh, this will obviously eventually lead to increase in profits and turnover. Okay, uh, company acquisition. Okay, if your company evolves, grows, you can actually buy out other companies within the same field. So, for, uh, so basically, if you've got a computer hardware shop, you can actually potentially be so good, or your system is so effective, that you're putting other computer um, companies out of business, you can actually acquire the company, expand, and um, grow your business. Okay, legal requirements. Okay, this legal requirements, what I mean by this is, it is a legal requirement, sometimes due to the new data protection policies, um, due to computer literacy, uh, 
um, disability factors or sometimes computers I mean, you need to expand okay computers you may need to get a new computer system because um, the existing one is not suitable for people with disabilities okay so it might actually be a legal requirement most organizations it's a legal requirement to have computers hardware access to the actual building um, for suitable for all types of people especially disabled people okay so due to legal requirements you also this might be another reason to look at your current system and see how you can improve it okay need to increase productivity okay your sales might have been improved okay you're getting a lot of sales but there's not enough people to deal with those sales for example let's look at an um, existing example Tesco okay they, every, as you know, Tesco's used to work on till, um, tills. Okay. They used to be checkout um, administrators. You've got about 10 of them. Let's just give an example. 10 checkout assistants. Now, the queues kept expanding and expanding. But you can't, you can't hire more any more staff. What did Tesco do? They had the self-serve till. Now, a lot of organizations, okay, they changed their system from a person in checkout serving you to actually a computerized system where you can actually process um, your items yourself and then you can obviously pay for it yourself okay so increase to increase productivity okay um, you increase you introduce a new system so that's another reason finally reduce costs okay we've looked at the example of Tesco where we've hired um, so rather than replacing staff we've replaced them with computerized systems where you can pay for your own products okay this reduce cost because you don't need to hire, pay staff anymore you've got a computer doing all this for you so this is another key driver a business need this is why people do a systems analysis an existing system this is why you get any system analysis in or analyst in sorry uh, what they can do look at your system and look at ways they can improve that okay development life cycles this is what we've been doing what we've looked at over previous lessons yeah, there are many ways the systems analysis process is structured. So structured meaning the way you do that systems analysis. Sorry, the way you do that systems analysis. Okay, it's not it's not done all over the place. It has to be structured in a certain order, just like we did in lesson. Okay, there are no. Okay, these are development life cycles. Okay, are also on, sometimes um, they can be referred to as methodology. So there's different types of methodology. These uh, common modules models include, okay, what we've looked at in class, the waterfall life cycle, uh, rapid application model, sorry, rapid application development model, okay, and the spiral model. So these are ones that we've looked at in class. So I'm just going to briefly go through with it. This should all be in our head by now, and really you should know this by now. So in the waterfall cycle, as you know, each stage is done one after the other. Okay, you do not move on to the next stage until you have completed the first one. So just like in a real waterfall, water never goes back to the top. So once you've completed, as you can see, it's one after the other, uh, project initiation, feasibility, okay, each stage is done one after, and the arrows are pointing downwards, you don't go back up. I've never seen a waterfall that goes back upwards. So let's just say you get to analysis stage, you cannot go back to investigation, feasibility, or project initiation. Can only move forward okay what are the advantages okay we know this we covered them okay the model is simple one after the other you just process there's no confusion it gives you control because once you've completed one you move on to the next you don't need to go backwards okay okay one it moves one phase at a time now what are the disadvantages once again we've looked at this okay there's no turning back so if you've forgotten something or oh, you've missed out something there is no going back okay um, and in that on that instance if any of these stages are not complete correctly the system will not be fit for purpose if you miss out key requirements and you get to the design stage of the implementation and realize that it'll be too late you would have wasted money you would have wasted time and you will have to start all over again okay rapid up, uh, application development Okay, uses minimal planning in favor of quick. As you know, those the group that did rapid apps, you kept going, you did, uh, went through each stage one at a time, design, you prototype, tested it, assess, once again, assess, kept going around and around. So, 
basically this speed achieved by using specialist tool okay you focus on the building so forget all, you don't concentrate on the theory work the investigation you just get on with it get to the design stage create a prototype test it see if it works then assess it again see what's wrong okay you keep going around so you can go over each stage as many times as possible until your work is complete so you can do the cycle could be repeated up to five times or even more okay advantage of this fast development as in you skill like i said you get straight to the point okay you can improve each stage go back to each stage you can improve it as many times as possible okay um the disadvantage is as you know okay sometimes because you work so fast or you do it so quickly it can, you can miss out key features and you may not always get exactly what you're looking for because you didn't spend that time doing an investigation or listing requirements okay it's not easy to scale up or expand the system so once you've created it that's it you don't you can't look for ways of improving it because you just got you created it and um, you haven't got a list of requirements to find out or investigate any what you really needed Okay, it can waste time as you know if you keep repeating going round and round repeating each stage you're going to waste a lot of time and you're going to waste a lot of money spiral model okay combines this combination of a bit of waterfall and prototyping okay as you know that group the group that did the spiral you can revisit each stage once you've actually completed it okay this is usually used in large expensive and complicated projects so let's just look at an example of a spiral model as you can see you will start on an investigation, sorry, requirements. Then you'll go around the spiral, but then you'll get to investigation. You come to design, and at the design, if you look um, adjacent, in line with design is requirements. So you can actually work on design and requirement at the same time. Then you move on implementation. Once again, work on implementation and requirements. You can work uh, both stages at the same time. And you go around once again the spiral until you get to testing. So while you're testing, you can actually look back at your design. And see if there's any improvements or changes you want to make and once you get to maintenance once again you do the repair sorry you make the improvements based on your testing plus you can actually change your implementation at the same time as well so a spiral model you could work at different stages at the same time now what is the advantages of this okay you've got many chances to improve the design during the process so once again like i said you can go back to stages that you've done or you if you've missed out anything you can go back to it uh, okay the model can cope with changes so any changes you make while you're revisiting previous stages the model while you don't you can cope with this okay this is disadvantage what are the disadvantages okay, it's expensive to run this because obviously you're going to be doing a lot of things at the same time you're going to be revisiting stages multiple times okay you need skills skills are required usually you need to be an expert um, to be able to handle such a large project like this uh, okay, it's not suitable for low risk project. Okay, so something more suitable for a low risk proje project would be like um, the rapid apps methodology. Okay, so guys, that is um, principles of systems analysis there that we've covered in this presentation, and we've also covered uh, develop development life cycles. And what you need to do now is take some notes because remember some of the this is what your test is going to be based on what you've learned in this presentation and all the other presentations followed up after this so make sure you make notes expand on what i've to taught you already because not everything is on this power uh, sorry not everything i've said is on this powerpoint and it's going to be coming up in your test so make sure you note down any key points that i've mentioned or talked about while going through this presentation.